Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I will show you a really neat false cut that uses a table. So here's what it looks like. And of course the cards are still gonna be in order. So as you can tell, it's a really uh, quick, really simple false cut. And uh, it looks really good, it gets the job done. Uh, another neat thing about this is that you can chain two or more of these cuts in a row to make it longer. So for example, I'm going to chain two of these false cuts together. So here's what that would look like. Okay, and of course uh, the cards are still going to be in order. So uh, let's, let's take a look at this cut in slow motion so you can see exactly how the packets are moving. So here's what's happening. That's all there is to it. But with the right rhythm and speed, it, it looks very good. So uh, let, let's break this down a bit more. In order to do the cut, there's two prerequisites. Uh, you need to know how to do a swing cut. Okay, and you need to know how to hold a pinky break. I've uh, made tutorials on both of these moves in the past. So if you don't know how to do them yet, I'll uh, put links on the screen up here and in the description box down below so that you can learn them. Once you know how to do those moves, uh, you, you will be ready to tackle this cut. So, let's break it down. I'm going to start with the deck in your left hand, transition it to a right hand overhand billow grip, and you're going to start by cutting about a third of the cards into your left hand using that swing cut. Next step is to cut another third right on top of the left hand cards, but this time you need to keep a pinky break in between those two packets. All right, so this is probably the hardest part of the cut. You wanna be able to cut this next packet on top of this packet without any hesitation. So you need to be very comfortable at creating that, that pinky break. Okay, and obviously you don't want there to be any indication of a pinky break from the front. So that's probably where you're gonna to have to focus most of your practice. Uh, but over time, as you practice, you'll be able to cut that next packet onto this packet uh, very comfortably. All right. Once you're in this position, you're going to take your remaining right hand cards, place them on the table, pick up all of the cards above the right hand break, or the left pinky break, sorry I'm jumbling all my words, pick up all the cards above the break, place them on top of the table packet, and take the remaining cards, place them on top of the table. And you're done. Okay, just a little uh, note there. When I place these cards on the table, each of these packets I kind of skew, I, I skew them a bit so that they're not squared up. So then afterwards, I could come over and manually square them. And that uh, gives the, the illusion that the cards were indeed mixed because you're needing to square them afterwards. It's just a minor detail there. But that's, that's really all there is to it. So the main thing you need to focus on is the rhythm and doing it without any hesitation in one continuous flow. Now if you want to do that extension of the cut where you uh, chain more than one together, here's what you're going to do there. Your first cut, you want to cut off a much larger chunk of cards, so maybe like two-thirds into your left hand. And then you're going to cut about half of whatever whatever's uh, remaining. And then you continue on the same way that you would have before. But once you're in this step, now you have a whole bunch of cards still in this hand. So you can just come over and start the cut all over again. Okay, so that doubles the amount of cuts that take place. And of course you can chain it as many times as you want. You know, you can cut a whole bunch of cards the first time. You know, and then you can cut, you know, the majority of the cards the second time. You can chain it a third time. You can keep doing this. Oh, that was a bad one because I cut all but one card. <laughs> but you can keep doing this as long as you want. And in the end, you're going to end up with a retained deck. Okay, so uh, I hope you guys really like that cut. It's definitely a good one. It's a, it's a quite a common cut too, actually. I see a, a lot of people using this, amateurs, professionals. Uh, and for a good reason. It's It's quick and clean. It gets the job done. So uh, practice that. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this move, 
uh, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer. And uh, have a nice day. Bye.